All right, I did an interesting little project yesterday, and I'm just going to repeat part of it for you because this is something I've always wanted to know how to do, and I figured it out yesterday. Of course, I am not a, an expert or a professional in, in picture editing or, or graphic design. I'm an economics professor, but let me show you real quickly how I did a, a trick. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you how you can cut out a person from a photograph so that you can paste it into a different photo. So that's a common thing people want to do. Or, as I did, go one step further and make a silhouette of somebody's head, in this case, my head. And I'm going to be using the free uh, open source software called GIMP, so uh, it's easy to Google GIMP and download it. So uh, if you want to play along at home, go ahead and download GIMP and get a, a photo of something or somebody and, and play along here. So let me bring up the photo that I started with. So here I am. I just took the camera and I started, I just took a picture of myself sitting in my office here. So this is what we're going to work with. Now what I'm going to do is just drag this photo into GIMP. So I'm, I ran the GIMP program and I'm going to drag it into that program. So here's a little GIMP window. So let me make that a little bigger here. And I'm just going to drag that photo into it. So let's see, here it is. I'm just going to drag it from the folder and drop it right there. Um, and now I'm going to make this bigger. I, I like to zoom by holding down the control key and then rolling my mouse wheel. You can, uh, you can zoom in that way. Now the tool that I use, there are a few different ways that you can do this, I understand. Uh, the tool that I'm going to use is um, right here. You just click on Tools selection tools, intelligent scissors. Now some people use the lasso tool or the free select tool. Um, I used intelligent scissors and it, and it seemed to work okay. So select the intelligent scissors. Now something else I found that was uh, very helpful is to bring up the, the tool option window. And to do that, go to um, Windows, uh, let's see. Dockable Dialogues and Tool Options. So what this does is anytime you are using a tool it brings up some extra options. I don't really need this window so I'm going to move it over here. Some extra options that you might be uh, want to use while you're doing it. And I used the Feather Edges uh, sometimes, I'll show you that, and Interactive, interactive Boundary I selected because what that does is let you um, adjust the boundary. So what these intelligent scissors do is um, it tries to figure out the boundary on its own. So I'm going to zoom in to the bottom of my my head here, my neck, and what I'm going to do is just cut out my head. Let me show you the final product that um, that I ended up with here. So I, I wanted a little um, Logo on, uh, I'm releasing a, a book on game theory. I wanted a little logo that made it look like somebody was thinking. And so this is the outline of my head, and I added some gears and some punctuation marks. And so that's, that's what I, I ended up with here after a lot of work in a couple of different programs. I'm just going to show you how to cut out a head and turn it into a silhouette here. So uh, using these scissors, let's zoom in here. So hold, again, hold down the control key and... I'm rolling my mouse wheel, but there are other ways to do this. And you just want to left click where you want to start cutting and it'll drop a little dot down there. So you see that little dot? And then you want to um, click again with the left mouse button. And it tries to follow along what you want it to follow. Now I don't like what it just did because instead of following my neck, it's following a shadow here. So that's not really my neck. So that's what this interactive boundary will do here. It lets you left click on the boundary and drag it inward so uh, to try to help it find the boundary you want it to look for. And so I, I kind of clicked and drug it over there a couple of times and uh, it seemed like it did a pretty good job most of the time. So what I do is just every time uh, you know my head curves a little bit I just go about every inch here and left click again and it it tries to follow based on color and uh, 
edge detection algorithms that it has here. Now you don't want to click in here to move, so you can use the little uh, scroll bars on the side here of the window to move, or you can just roll your uh, mouse wheel up and down and that'll move. So I'm just going to go around my head and I'm going to keep clicking and I'm just going to watch to try to make sure that it's following the outline of my head. And when I was doing my lips, there's not much of a hard edge there, so it didn't do a good job. See, it's cutting inside. So we can grab it and move it as long as you have that interactive boundary uh, selected there. And I want it to go you know, kind of in here and then up. And so it's, it's doing, not doing a bad job here. Once we zoom out, a lot of that little jaggedness will go away. And so that's a little too jagged. So let me drag it in there. And sorry for the close-up of my nose there, but that's just kind of a necessary evil of, of doing this video. So let's see here. And, you know, some of these little jaggies, uh, once, you, once you zoom out on the finished project, uh, product, you're not going to be able to see those. But, but again, you can always adjust it if that interactive boundary thing is there. So let me just do this quickly so we can show you the finished product. Now when, when I got to my hair, I purposefully kind of went out to kind of give the illusion of some hair. So I'm kind of tracing different little tufts of hair here. And then going in the hair and out uh, to give the illusion that I have some hair. So Alright, so let me move over here. So I'm going to pause this, and I'm going to keep tracing around here, and I'm, then I, when I almost get done, I'll show you the next step. Okay, I'm on the back side here, and this, this part's pretty easy because there are some sharp edges for it to find. So you don't have to, you probably want to have a different colored background on a picture if you want to do this ideally. Okay, so we're almost done, and then I'm just going to do straight across here to this starting point. So you have to click the starting point when you're done and it's just going to draw a straight line along the bottom there pretty much straight now the way that you can tell that you have closed the figure that's the key you have to close the figure um, is that if you look at the scissors here when they're inside the figure there's a little O right above the scissors when you go outside the figure watch the difference here it's got a uh, circle with a slash through it, and when you're on the boundary, it changes to a plus sign. So inside an O, on the boundary, plus sign, outside um, a closed circle. Now, don't do anything right now. Uh, don't save it. Don't click anywhere else except if you want to select everything that's inside this boundary right now, and that's probably what you want to do, click inside the boundary okay so I'm just gonna left click if you save it all that work you just did is done first you have to click inside the head and you see what happened is it now has a little dotted outline around the shape of the head and it looks like uh, it did pretty good there now um, what I did is I made a silhouette out of my head now I wanted to make this a black uh, inside, but you know, once you have it this selected, you can copy it, you can export it, you can save it, and do all kinds of things. Um, but let me show you what I did um, to make the inside black and the outside white. Now we have selected the inside. I went over here to um, edit and fill with FG color, foreground color. And the foreground color by default is black. And so I click fill with foreground color and that makes a nice silhouette of my head there. And you can still recognize kind of that it's, that it's me. I showed this to my wife and she said, that's you. Um, now, if you want to make the outside white like a traditional silhouette, then go to, um, select invert select invert what that's going to do is instead of selecting and working on the inside of the head we're going to work on the area outside the head now so select invert and now we want to go to edit
fill with background color. The background color is automatically white. So click that. And now you have a nice silhouette there. Um, now also what I did is I, uh, instead of looking this way, for whatever reason, I decided I wanted to be looking to the right. So I went to image and let's see. What, where is that tool? Oh yeah, it's right, it's right here under image. Image transform flip horizontally. And so now I'm looking the other way there. Um, one other thing, um, idea you might want to use, especially if you just want to uh, take this picture and put it somewhere else. Uh, let me undo everything that I just did there. So let me uh, back up. I'm hitting Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. I'm on a Windows computer, so that's for for um, undo. Suppose we don't want to make a um, a silhouette. Suppose instead we want to cut my head and paste it on another picture somewhere. Let me show you quickly how you can do that. Um, so we're not going to make my head black uh, and just into a silhouette. Instead, I'm going to um, just do select invert. Then I'm going to do edit, fill with background color. So that's just going to make the background white there. Now, if you want to take this this image and then paste it in on top of another image. What you have to do is instead of having this background white, you want to make it transparent. Otherwise, if you paste the head right now, uh, you're going to have this big white block around it. Uh, if you just want the outside to be transparent, then just take, uh, go to colors and click color to alpha, color to alpha. Alpha means transparent. So color to alpha. <clears throat> and what that's going to do is take this white color from white. That's usually what the default <clears throat> at color is. You can change any color to transparent, though. But we're going to change that white color to transparent. OK. And now it changes the background to this little checkerboard design. And that tells you that it's transparent. Now, if you want to uh, add this to another picture, what I would recommend, there are other ways to do this, I would recommend exporting the picture to a, a file, which will keep the uh, background transparent, and we'll just have my lovely head here. So we'll go to File, Export, and um, when you export from GIMP, you can export it as a lot of different um, types of file. But some types of files don't allow you to have um, a transparent background. Um, ones that will definitely allow a transparent background are uh, GIF is one, and there are some others. Uh, so instead of saving it as a JPG, uh, I'm not sure that JPG allows transparency uh, in it. So um, let's just save it here. Uh, if you don't want it to be a JPG, you can click the little plus sign here. I think you can, uh, you can actually just change the extension here, and it's smart enough to know it. But you can select, hit the plus sign, and that will give you all the different um, types of file that you can save it as. Um, and you can either save it as a PNG file. I'm pretty sure that allows uh, transparency or a GIF, uh, G GIF file. Let's just save it as a GIF image here and say export and then click export again now let me bring this into another image and set it on top and you can just see how that would look uh, so here i've opened up another program called um, inkscape inkscape that uh, is also a free program that i'm i'm a little more uh, used to working with Inkscape because I draw diagrams and thing, things in here, but I don't know. Let me just grab a random photo out of my photo folder here and um, just drag that over here into Inkscape. And so here's a picture of a mountain, and let me drag over this uh, picture of the cutout of my head. All right, so here I am, and now I can resize this uh, photo of my head. Let's see, let's make it a lot smaller here, maybe 30% as big. And where'd my head go? Here it is over here. And so now we can, we can put my head up on top of a mountain here.
just in case you ever wondered what that would look like. So this is how people make pictures where they they kind of cut out themselves and put them in different locations. So that's about all I know. I hope you uh, have learned a little bit here, and I hope you have fun using these free tools, uh, GIMP and Inkscape. Have fun with your own pictures, guys.